Hi, everyone. This is Brent Simon. Um, so I thought I'd jump on and do uh, a quick um, Q&A session, uh, see if anybody's out there that's got some questions that they need answering. Um, happy to take uh, DV 2023, DV 2024 questions. And let me just at the outset deal with 2020 and 2021. Um, again, still no uh, result in the appeal process. We just have to wait for that. Um, happy to take any questions you've got about DV 2020 or 2021. But um, you know, the honest answer is we don't have um, we don't have the outcome yet, right? So we don't have the appeal uh, process. Um, on DV 2023, we're getting very close to the end of uh of the program and uh the government with the best intentions i suppose um have been very busy in uh scheduling um cases for september and what they've done by doing that um is they've scheduled so many it's going to put the 221g cases at risk so if you clear your case through 221g um in september um then it'll be a toss-up as to whether there's even a visa available for you or not um if you clear into in in august you should be okay but at some point we're going to hit a brick wall um and we'll actually run out of visas um now there's a chance that they could actually continue uh the visas to be allocated and issued above fifty-five thousand. It shouldn't happen that way. It, it's against the law, but they did it in DV 2022. Um, and I had assumed that they would be not sort of creating that crazy situation in, in 2023. But hey, presto, they are creating that situation where that is a possible outcome as far as I'm concerned, um, because they, they've they've issued so many uh, 2NLs. They've issued um, 1,700 two NLs for September interviews, which is, um, it's surprising. I thought they were going to issue about a thousand, uh, at most. Um, so 1700 and I don't think they're finished yet. I think there's going to be a few more. Um, so anyway, let's take some questions. Um, now this is going to be a standard question. Will Abu Dhabi embassy, um, uh, it, it take some more, I don't know which specific embassies will take any more, um, any more two NLs for September? I can't. I can't guess that. Right. Um, I just answered about twenty twenty. So go back to the beginning. To the beginning. Um, Ilona says we have. We were a family of four people. We've now got a new member of the family. Can it be included in getting a visa? Yeah. You're, are you a twenty twenty three case? Basically, if if the new family member you're talking about is a baby, there is a method. Uh, to add a baby onto the case when you process it on a, so um, uh, it, it, there's there's a there's a method depending on which stage you're at, right? Whether you are waiting for an interview, whether you've had an interview and you haven't entered the USA yet, um, babies can be added to the uh, to the case. Um, so um, depending on the timing of your particular case, the circumstances of your case there will be a method you can even by the way so you might be waiting for the interview you haven't had that yet and the way to add the baby at that point is that you um you communicate with the embassy and they will um, add the baby for you um as long as there's visas available they can do that right if you've had your visa interview already and you're just waiting to enter the usa um there is a, a standard procedure for that um which happens at the port of entry you don't have to go back to the embassy for that one and if you've entered the usa but then left the usa um and you come back within the first two years again there's a different procedure for that so there's always a procedure is what i'm trying to say I, i've actually documented that on my on my blog um so you could go read it there if you wanted all right um Jody says, uh, I was chosen for 2024. When would expect something from KCC requesting documents and medical booking? They will not ask you for the for the, um, for the documents. Um, the document procedure, as I called it, where they were asking people to submit documents, that has been removed for DV 2024. It was removed for 23, and it was removed during DV 2022. 
So they won't be asking for documents. Uh, in terms of the medical booking, you book that yourself when you receive the 2NL, okay? The 2NL is an email, and then subsequently you go and check your actual, uh, your date of scheduled interview online on the ESC page. Um, and when you get that 2NL, you've got about six weeks notice, typically six to eight weeks roughly, and you go ahead and you uh, and you make your own medical appointment. You do that yourself, okay? And you get the instructions on how to do that, who to do that with, and that sort of thing. But uh, but you do it yourself, okay? You're on two two one G, but I was called Monday to do payment for the derivatives. What's your idea on this? Look, they don't. <laughs> I can't guarantee that they're about to issue, but um, they don't ask you to come in and pay for derivatives in order to disqualify you or turn you down, right? So just using some common sense, you've probably got some good news coming, but um, the visa is only real when it's in your hand, okay? Uh, Mao says, I've uh, been following you since I won DV2023 and you're in, in Philadelphia. Fantastic, congratulations, welcome. Um, Philly is a great city actually, I enjoy that city. Yeah, it's not my favorite area of the country because it gets cold there in the winter. Um, but it is a cool city. Huh? Uh, there's lots to like about it. Good luck there. Uh, Nick Nick says, 24 select E here. Plan to visit the US prior to being selected. Now we wonder if we will get our ESTA for travel since the DV shows immigration intent, immigrant intent, we call it. Um, it won't be a problem. You'll be able to apply for and receive an ESTA. Um, if you had like a B1 visa or whatever, you could use that to uh, there's been plenty of people who, uh, while they're waiting for their uh, diversity interview, they have entered the USA. But just make sure you play by the rules, right? Don't overstay. Uh, don't break any laws. Don't drink, drive. Don't do anything stupid while you're in the USA, okay? Because um, that would, could be a life-changing uh, bad thing to do, right? Can you appeal against the dismissal of a case after administrative procedure? The administrative procedure, the, the 221G, is effectively an appeal. It's actually a refusal followed by a period of time when you've got an opportunity sometimes to fix whatever is wrong with your case, right? So, for example, you go for an interview and you forget to provide some document. You're then put on 221G, which means a refusal. Um, and if you can provide your document, then you could be issued with that visa, right? And so, in a sense, you could look at 221G as being kind of a, an appeal process. Now, if the refusal that you get, the final refusal after uh, 221G, if you get a final refusal, and it's not over a document, it's maybe a background check or anything, something like that, then there's less likely that you know it's less likely that you can change their mind they've they've given it uh extra thought they've taken extra time to try and see if they can approve your case and they've decided not to um so there is no formalized appeal process and there is an assumption of something called consular non-reviewability which means their decision um is their decision and generally their decisions are final. Um, there are a few exceptions that where, where they've made a particularly bad uh, decision and you could maybe sort of um, have a sort of an informal appeal process, but it's not a formal thing. They, you, they don't have to uh, accept your, um, you know, your requests uh, to revisit the case or anything like that. There isn't a formal process. So, um, the answer to your question really depends on why you were refused in the end. What were the circumstances, that sort of thing. Okay, so let me know in more detail if you like on the blog. Um, and I can give you a better answer if you give me more information, more detailed information. Um, Amin says, case is 21K in Nairobi, eight months I'm current. Baby is born in March this year. You say, you say don't send his form until you get, you say, don't send his form until you get your 2NL. I didn't say that. I would never say that. Maybe others said um, wrongly, don't unlock your form. But what I always say is for a baby, yeah, you unlock your form, your DS 260, and you send that in. Um, so 
look, if you haven't had your 2NL from Nairobi, uh, you're probably no, not going to get one. And the embassy doesn't know anything about your case until the 2NL is sent to you. The case is sent to them by KCC. Uh, Nairobi have been extremely um, bad in their dealings this, this year. And there's lots of people in the in the queue, um, and they obviously clearly don't intend to um, interview all the people. So if you don't have a 2NL already and you're you're hoping to be scheduled at Nairobi, it's probably not going to be good news. Um, so the baby thing is the least of your problems, to be honest. Um, but there you go. DV21 lawsuit. Um, I talked about it right at the beginning. We're still waiting for the appeal. <coughs> Unable to access login C Act to fill out DS260. Um, please help me. Right. What you've got to do is you've got to go to my YouTube channel and search through. And I, I, I could do it now, but I'm not going to do it now because I'm talking to all these people, right? Um, you've got to search through my videos and uh, so particularly search my channel. So you can put in YouTube at the top, Brit Simon and um, DS260, and you'll find uh, some, uh, there's two videos I created which show you how to get into a DS260 or to prove whether you've locked it up. Like sometimes what happens is you actually try so many times with the wrong information that you block your DS260, and then you have to go through a procedure with your embassy and all, uh, you know, it's a it's a pain in the ass. You have to contact KCC. KCC sent you a, sent you to the embassy. The embassy gives you a code to unlock your form and a whole big mess. In order to avoid that big mess, the the I give instructions on how to not block your form, but it, you might already have done that. And so my instructions, if you follow my instructions properly, will at least show you whether you've blocked your form or not. Um, and hopefully get you in. But in 99.999% of the cases, people that say to me, oh, I can't get into my form, it's because they've blocked it or because they're, they're not doing the right thing. They're not entering the right information into the form. They're not paying attention to the to what they should be putting in there. Okay. Um, are you still selecting DV entry? I don't select. <laughs> um, the, uh, the entry period for each diversity lottery period is in October. Then results are announced in May. So right now, we've got people who are processing uh, that found out a year ago in May uh, that they were winners. And that's DV 2023. And then we've got people who found in uh, found out just a couple of months ago that they were winners and they're DV 2024 and they're waiting to start their process. So the next October entry period will be for DV 2025. Um, so you could you could uh, enter then, but only enter at the official site only during October and the beginning of November, um, and don't go through any agencies or you know people that say they can do that for you or whatever. Don't don't make that mistake. I've made a mistake in the country of chargeability. I chose Saudi Arabia instead of UAE. Won't really make a difference, um, since both are in the same region that uh, particular mistake can be forgiven. Um, when you are, when you choose a region that is different from the region it should have been, so you choose, for example, Africa, or, you, or you're an African born in Africa, and you're living in Paris, let's say, in France, um, and you choose France as your country of eligibility, that will get you refused, because you should be in the Africa uh, region and the draw for the Africa region, but you're ac you are actually in the draw for Europe, and there's no way to get over that. That is a guaranteed refusal. But if you are in the same region um, as the region you should have been, then you gained no benefit from that mistake, and therefore you can that that mistake can be forgiven. So you don't don't have to worry so much. Okay. Um, I'm from Ethiopia, DV2022, case number 43K, one of your followers, or well, lot of knowledge from your videos, that's nice. Me and my family are living in the USA now, thank you for everything else, fantastic. I'd love, I'd love to hear your, um, I have a, an interview experience um, uh, um, page, web page on my blog, 
where people had experiences. But what would be really interesting to me is people such as yourself that have been in the country a year and two years and just hear about some of the things that you found it, you know, interesting or difficult to adjust to. What was it like registering your kids in school? How about choosing a doctor? How about opening a bank account and uh, buying a first car or getting a job or uh, finding a home, a place to live? There's so many things you have to do when you emigrate here. And I've got perspectives on all of those things, but I would love to hear um, stories, particularly from someone like, you know, you come from Ethiopia, totally different country uh, to America, different systems, different concepts. And you came to America. I mean, <laughs> you know, it must be must be wild, a wild ride. I'd love to hear from you. So do, if you get a chance ever, um, you know, over the coming months and you feel you've got a few minutes, just write down some of those thoughts that I just mentioned and let me know. I'd be really interested. Thanks for dropping by anyway. I'm in the 2024 group, Australia. G'day, mate. Uh, Jody, Jody, is it? Jody, Joddle. Um, when would you expect contact from KCC to request documentation and booking info? Oh, I think we already did this one. Sorry. Um, yeah. Yeah, we already did the documentation thing. I've probably just, you've repeated your question, I should imagine. Um, is 2023 OC 2569 will be interviewed? No, it won't. It's too high. The cutoff is at 2500. Um, so unfortunately, for the sake of 69 numbers or 70 numbers, actually, uh, you missed out. And that's not going to change. So I'm sorry, your uh, opportunity for DB 2023 is gone. Um, <coughs> you can enter again into another year. Um, you don't get any advantage or disadvantage from your previous win. So um, you have to just try again, I'm afraid. <coughs> oh, dear me. Um, Switzerland requires to book the interview for TV 2024 prior to the interview. Yeah. Uh, can this be done only once you get your 2 and Yes. You, there's, there's no need or there's no reason that you would be doing that now. You have no idea which month you're going to be scheduled. Um, you can kind of guess from your from your case number, but you can't be a hundred percent sure. So, um, and the and you can't go to your DV interview with a very old medical. Um, the reason for that is when your um, when your visa is issued, it will be issued with an expiry date, and that expiry date is the date of the medical plus six months, right? So, let's say you go and get your medical four months or five months before the interview actually happens, then you'll only have a few weeks to actually enter the USA after your your um, uh, your interview. So don't do it. You you get the medical once you get your 2 and Okay? There's no need to, um, don't, you know, there's no need to rush that. There's no harm in waiting until you get your 2 and Okay? Um, now, the only, the only difference I would make is probably not going to be applicable in your case, but in some countries where... Uh, TB is commonplace, it makes sense for some people, I would say, <coughs> to have an early medical <coughs> to find out whether they've got TB or not, um, have a chest x-ray, because it takes three months to treat TB, um, and in some cases, people don't have that three months to process. Um, so if you, for example, you get an, you get a a DV 2023 case and you get a 2NL, let's say yesterday, you go for medical in a week's time or whatever, and they say, oh, you've got something on your x-rays, you need to be treated for a TB. You don't have the time to complete that treatment before the end of the year, and therefore you're screwed. So that particular case can be avoided by going for an earlier medical. Now, I don't recommend that to a lot of people because the places where TB is commonplace is places where the cost of the medical is prohibitive uh, to do twice because you would end up doing the medical twice, right? So um, I don't recommend that often, but I'm just sort of laying it out there. For a very few people, that might be a, an appropriate method. Okay. Uh, Ilona, okay, you were asking about um, adding the, the kid and you're waiting for the court's decision. So in your scenario, um, the uh, the way that that works is, and I think the lawyers are a bit confused about this, or at least one of them is, because um, I've heard him talk about this, and he's not correct. Um, 
so the thing is that when you are, let's say we get the, if you're on the Gomez side, right, and, and uh, Gomez case, where 9,095 visas will be issued, when they, um, when they release those visas, they will be allocating the cases somehow, right? And so um, they will say, okay, so uh, the, 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 whatever, re whatever method they use to prioritize one case over another, we don't know. But when you go for your, um, when you get told that you are going to go for your interview, you were four people to start with, now you're five, right? What will happen is you'll let the embassy know and they'll issue with five, um, five visas if you pass, right? So you'll have to fill out another DS-260 if you've had a baby. You have to add another DS-260. They'll help you with doing that. They'll have to, you know, you'll be instantly scheduled um, for, you know, this will only happen when you've been scheduled uh, for an embassy interview because of the way that they'll have to sort things out. And then they will let you add that that fifth person. Now, the baby. And that they won't have that um, that allocated visa, but they can go to, uh, to KCC and allocate the visa. And as long as all of that happens before all 9,095 visas are used up, then you will be able to add that kit. Um, <clears throat> it is not true to say, as I've heard at least one lawyer say, that um, only people who are plaintiffs in the cases or only uh, people who are covered by the Gomez case, um, you know, only the selectees and the derivatives that were known about at that time, only those people could be covered. That's bullshit. That's nonsense. Um, and it just speaks to you know, some of the lawyers don't really understand how the things work and diversity visa. So, um, uh, so anyway, so so that's uh, so that's not going to be a problem for you, Elena. Um, your problem is whether you whether a the appeal comes off and b whether your case amongst other cases who want the visas will get scheduled. Okay, um, but if you get scheduled and you get scheduled fast enough and you can sort of, you know, uh, work with the embassy, then you've got a very good chance to add uh, the additional person. Okay, the baby, I presume. I presume we're talking about a baby. All right, I hope that, I hope that helps. <clears throat> Dalil says, uh, there were 54% 54, 54 of holes in Africa. Is that number, is that number can increase significantly for DV24, 75% or more? Yes, I'm putting money on it, basically. Um, um, <clears throat> We've seen years where the holes rate increases or decreases dramatically. Um, and I'm almost certain that we haven't had the numbers of selectees yet for DV 2024. So we can't be certain. But let's say that in Africa, for example, you're from Africa. The, the highest case number that I've seen that I'm really sure is a real number is 122,000. So whereas, uh, which is roughly double the um the highest case number that we had in db 2023 but if we have um if we have a uh the same number of selectees which is about fifty thousand, uh for africa in db 2024 then that will tell me instantly that we've got a lot more holes right so um you can have the same number of selectees and a much higher case number because of what you're saying about here more holes and i'm almost a hundred percent sure that we are to some extent see, going to see that situation. Now, we could also see an increase in the number of selectees, but I don't believe that the doubling in uh, in case numbers that we're seeing is because we're going to see a double in, doubling of selectees. It makes zero sense that they would have invited uh, double DV2023 because DV2023, they invited or selected 119,000 people. It is not conceivable to me that they're going to have 240,000 um, uh, selectees for 55,000 visas. That absolutely makes no sense. So that means it must be that we're going to see a much bigger increase in the number of holes. Okay. Um, now, the, the, the math will be a bit weird because in Africa, Europe, and Asia, um, we see sort of graduated uh, number of holes, an increased number of holes per thousand cases in later numbers than we see in earlier numbers. The reasons for that is because of country limits during the draw. draw. I've explained that um, in various videos before and blog articles. 
I've explained it in great detail. I understand it very well. Um, and so I've explained that, I believe, well. Um, it, you can look up my whole theory, um, uh, blog articles and videos. Um, but, you know, I know how, why it happens and, and I'm perfectly prepared for it. But we won't know for sure what the actual um, sort of layout of the density of the cases versus holes is until uh, the January the 1st of next year. But as soon as I have the select T numbers, I'll be able to give a pretty good idea of, of how things are going to um, be laid out. Okay, but it will just be guessing at that point. <coughs> Educated guess. Uh, what about previous Tradinet? I don't know what a Tradinet is. I don't know what that. I don't know what that means. <laughs> um, should I include children over twenty-one years in the DS two hundred and sixty? Yes. People often get confused with this question. That when you do the DV entry, it says list all your children under twenty-one, but the DS two hundred and sixty says list all your children. It doesn't say anything about under twenty-one. So uh, you include all of the, all of the children in your DS two hundred and sixty, and. Second part of your question is, can the child that lives with you over 21 be included in the, in the, um, in the immigration process? No, they can't. Um, only children that were under 21 at the point of the TV lottery and added in your form um, can be included, not, not the child that was over 21 at that time. Okay. I plan to make a marriage in, in two months. Uh, but I did not include my husband in the DV 260, you mean DS 260, how can I pre proceed? Okay, if you plan to get married, then you were right not to include your husband, because that's not your husband, that's your boyfriend. Um, so uh, you can only add your then husband when you've got married. So when you get married in two months, you will unlock your DS 260 and add your husband you can do that the next day after the after the wedding but you can't do it before that point okay you can unlock before that point but you can't um, add and submit the new ds260 until you've actually got married okay any luck with the interview for oc 4560 for year 24. again we have to wait and see what the select t count was um in in DV 2023, I think there were 2,500 selectees. So I would be looking for a number of that or lower. Um, and, it, and really, it would need to be lower for your case to have a chance, um, which means a very high rate of holes. But uh, we'll have to see how that goes. So we'll know more information in about four weeks' time in the next feasibility. Any tips to prepare for DV interviews? Yeah, relax. Um, wear casual but smart clothes. Doesn't have to be uh, a business suit or anything like that. Just casual clothes, yeah, but nicely turned out. Uh, make sure you've read all the instructions, which means reading the main instructions, mean re reading the reciprocity page, and reading the country-specific instructions. Get all your documents together. Have photocopies of the main documents. Um, have your documents organized in a way that you can quickly uh, give them to the uh, the CEO when asked um, and take additional documentation that you think may be necessary depending on the particulars of your case, right? So if, for example, um, if you go for an interview, um, you should have something about financial situation, either bank statements or that sort of thing which show that you've got some money or if you don't have that, you should have an I-134. Um, that's the financial situation covered. So you should have the, that extra documentation with you. Um, <clears throat> if um, if you've got a kid of 21 years old that you think is covered by the CSPA, uh, which is the Child Status Protection Act, um, then you should print out all of the information on the CSPA from the government's website so that you can win the argument that so the, when the when the uh, CEO wrongly says, oh, your, your 21-year-old kid can't be included. Some 21-year-old children can be included in the DV process if they um, meet certain criteria of how old they are at the point that they get current, right? Basically, the, the, you get an extra six months, um, essentially. 
So uh, some CEOs don't understand that. So it's best if you can go to the interview prepared. So that's what I mean about preparing for the interview. You prepare so that you know the rules at least as well as the CEO. That's what I would do. That's what I did do. Um, I I knew I knew way more than than my interviewing officer. That's for sure. Um, <coughs> One DV lottery, but didn't include our child because could not access her photo at the time of playing. But I was give a visa with my wife. Where to start bringing her to the USA? You can't. You screwed up. Yeah, and if you'd have asked me, and I think you probably did, I'd have told you not to waste the money on the interview because you can never fix this. You lied in your interview. You've created, um, you've created an immigration fraud, right? So if you now try and include that kid in any way and say, oh, I had this kid. Well, you'll then find that your green cards are taken away from you. You'll be deported. Um, and when you and you can't fix this, it can never be fixed. You've got your green card based on a lie, based on fraud. You can't fix it. Um, and so I'm sorry you didn't take the instructions seriously enough. And I'm sorry that you thought it was okay to lie in your interview, but it wasn't okay. And, you know, you can't fix it. And I, I mean, I can't fix that for you. Nobody can. No lawyer can uh, because you've broken the law. So, you know, there you go. Another question. I just want to thank you for all the help you're doing in the US. And as a DV winner, awesome. Well done, Frank. Uh, God bless you too. What about the previous traditional marriage? Do I need to mention on DS264? The rules about traditional marriages vary by country. So in some countries, um, uh, marriages and divorces have to be registered with the government in order to be considered legal. So for example, just take Liberia as an example. <clears throat> in Liberia, there are, some, there are two forms of marriage. Um, one is the sort of what I would call the civil way, the governmental way, and the other is a traditional method, right? Uh, it's not particularly unusual. That's that's sort of fairly normal. But uh, if you've got married by the traditional method, you need to register that with the government, and there's a procedure for that. If you previously were married uh, traditionally and you've got divorced traditionally, that divorce needs also to have been registered with the government. I'm just talking about Liberia. But that's different. The procedures are different country to country. So, um, so you know, you need to consider whether your traditional marriage that you had before was actually a traditional, was a recognized marriage. Um, and so, yeah, uh, but if you, if you say you were previously married, you're expected to provide divorce paperwork. If there's no way you can provide that divorce paperwork because you actually weren't legally married, then don't say you were legally married when actually you weren't, right? I hope that makes sense. And I'm not suggesting you lie. I think lying in this process is the stupidest thing you can do, which is why I have to uh, react the way I did to the gentleman that asked the question. Um, if you lie, you know, you're on your own. I can't fix things for you. Um, so, so there you go. Uh, what's the fate of 2021? I don't know what will be the fate, but we'll find out when we get the appeal. Uh, Brett, we know if Q KCC is processing numerically or by date of dispatch of the DS260. Okay, so <laughs> this question is asked year after year after year, and people often argue with me about it. And for years, well, I, I don't know why they argue about it, but anyway. Um, so here's the way it works. When you submit your DS260s, those D DS260s are opened in the submission order. Opening does not mean processing, right? So two people submit their uh, DS260s on the same day. This one takes three months to process. This one takes six months to process. Why is there a difference? Well, because the cases are different. This guy traveled, you know, amongst the Middle East extensively. His name is Osama bin Laden, and he's a, a chemical and nuclear weapons expert. So his case is going to take some time to process, right? They're going to be worried about his name. They're going to be worried about his job. They're going to be worried about his travel history. And they're going to do all sorts of things to try and make sure uh, that they understand who the heck this guy is, right? That's this guy. This guy is called uh, Pierre Smith, 
<laughs> and he was born in Paris. He's never been out of France. Uh, and he's an accountant, the most boring person you've ever met in your life. And he's on his own. He's not even married, right? He's never been anywhere. <clears throat> he's going to take no time at all to get processed. In fact, I said he'd take three months to get processed. Well, at certain times of the year, he would take like less, probably less than two weeks. Um, so that's just a quick explanation. The processing times are different for DS 260s, but they open them on the on the day of you know the 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 order in which they were submitted, right? Then uh, cases are scheduled for interview based on the AV transition date, what we've called now the AV transition date. So cases that are processed and become current are added to a queue uh, of cases for the embassy. And as they're being added to that queue, they are ordered numerically within the within the, the numbers, right? So there is an advantage for the lower case numbers um, as they're being added to the AV um, queue and as they transition to, uh, to that AV queue. Um, and so you will see at times you will see case number as, be, as giving some cases an advantage, but not a complete advantage because if you're a low case number that was that guy Osama bin Laden with, you know, all this travel history and, and, and funky job, then he's going to take a long time to get to get processed anyway. And so even though he had a low case number, there's going to be people with higher case numbers that will go before him because um, because they get processed faster. Okay. So hopefully that's clear. Um, I hope it is. All right. Let's just, there we go. All right. So uh, thank you so much. So I've been watching you for the green card has arrived. Bank account uh, open. Now just job hunting. That's awesome. Congratulations. That's really good. I like that. Um, if you apply every year and don't win, does it have a tendency of stopping your entry into the USA? No. Um, applying for the lottery uh, is not uh, is the government have stated that they don't believe that that is immigrant intent just applying for the lottery right if you apply for the lottery and you win and you fill in your ds260 that can make future non-immigrant uh, visa applications a bit harder but just entering the lottery year after year or whatever that that shouldn't have any impact on your uh, entries at all okay uh, should we expect additional two NLs for Accra? I don't know. Uh, and, and Accra, honestly, what a pain in the ass they are. So I, I really don't know, Frank. Um, I hope so, but I, I mean, we must be very, very close to the end of the interviews now, I think, because, like, you know, they've done so many. It's been amazing what they've done, actually. Oops. Yeah, one second. I'm going to lose this. There we go. There we go. That's better, I think. Yeah. Um, okay. Do, do I know any reason why Nigeria Embassy haven't started an interview? No, I have no idea, and there's no excuse for it. But they clearly uh, have decided to not interview anyone. So I don't think it'll, it'll change. Uh, 1 TV 2024, and I'm not yet fully in DS 260. Uh, if I apply now, when can I expect to be called for an interview? In which month? I don't know in which month. Uh, you don't tell me what region you're in, which means your number is pointless. I, I don't know. I don't know what your number means because I don't know whether you're from Asia or Europe or Africa. Um, but even if I knew those things, I wouldn't give you a prediction about what month it'll be ready. But what I would say is get off your ass and fill in your DS-260. All right? Uh, submit that. Okay. Mm. Any news from Nairobi? No, none. Um, mind you, August 14th from Nepal. Good. Birth certificate shows mistake than actual birth. Uh, so you should be okay. Um, your your birth certificate shows mistake. Yeah, and I know why your birth certificate would be different to the government recorded date of your birth. I don't know, but you should be okay because they should just look at the birth certificate. I don't think they'll be accessing any any other um, uh, any other uh, information. Uh, hello from LA, Los Angeles. Um, fantastic. Congratulations. Um, and a uh, great city you've chosen to be in. Uh, at least it's not Nebraska or somewhere. <laughs> somewhere. I'm sure I'm going to get into trouble with 
with people that think I'm mean to uh, places like Nebraska and other places that I wouldn't live in. Oops. There we go. Oh, just pulled that. There they go. <laughs> right. Um, case number 30,000 from Age of Winner 2024. Which month? Yeah, I don't know when you'll be scheduled. Um, family of four, Elona. Okay. So, yeah, we've already, okay, we've already talked about that. Wow. Must be very behind the questions because that was ages ago. Um, 40 minutes. Do the USA Embassy record our call or message on social media like WhatsApp Messenger? Sometimes they will ask for proof about certain things. So if it may be advantageous to your case to give them um, WhatsApps and that sort of thing, if in certain scenarios that can be advantageous. Um, they don't have access to that unless you give it to them. But if, for example, you just got married uh, to the love of your life that you can't afford to leave, you won't leave, um, and you want to prove that you didn't just marry for the green card, then you may show, for example, your WhatsApp mes messages or other social media messages to show that you have uh, had a relationship with that person for a long time anyway, right? And so uh, it might be advantageous for you to show that. Other than that, uh, they generally shouldn't be accessing um, your uh, your social media data, right? Um, okay. For DB2022, currently in New York, case number 20,000, AS20,000. 20, oh, DB2022 got interviewed. Well, you got interviewed in that last crazy rush. Congratulations. Um, that's awesome. Love it. Um, I've played many times and can't win. How can I get a win? It's just a random lottery, dude. <laughs> you have to keep on playing. Your chances, if you're in Africa, your chance of selection is about one in 200 years to one in 100 years in that range, right? If you're in Oceania region, your chance of selection is more like one in 20 years. And if there's a husband and wife applying, that combination of being in Oceania, both of you applying in Oceania means that... Um, uh, you know, most people would find either the wife or the husband would be selected roughly once every five years. You know, it's something like that. I mean, you could work it out statistically. Um, but the but the the chance of your selection is much worse in Europe, Asia, Africa. Africa is the worst, um, and South America. You know, South America is pretty bad as well. Oceania is the only one where you've got a fairly good chance of um, selection. Um, why is it like that? Well, it purely is the number of people that enter in the Oceania region compared to the number of uh, visas that are allocated, which is about 850 a year. Uh, the number of entries is pretty low um, uh, in comparison, whereas there are some countries in, uh, in Africa, for example, that have like a million entries, right? Uh, it's very common to see Ghana was, uh, for example, well over a million entries. Nigeria, when it was um, in there, was well over a million entries for one country. Now, some of the, some of which is is incredibly crazy. You know, Ghana has a total population of 20 million people. So, for them to have a million people enter it means one in 20 people all get the idea to enter the lottery to go to to live in America. It's obviously obviously suspicious. Uh, it's weird, it's odd, um, but nevertheless, it happens, right? So um, now the population of Australia is probably the same as Ghana, let's say, um, but with a fraction, a tiny fraction of the number of entries. And that's why um, Oceania have a better chance. That's basically why, okay? Uh, from Saudi Arabia, uh, enter the States before the visa expiry, go back to Saudi Arabia within three months um, and work. On, yeah, can you do that? Yes, you can do all that. Yeah, it's fine. You can, as the day you arrive in America, you will become a, a lawful permanent resident of America. Um, you're allowed to leave uh, as soon as five minutes later. <laughs> you can leave immediately. You can get back on the next plane, turn around and go home. You can leave for up to 12 months, although under keeping your absences under six months is, is wise, but you can leave for up to 12 months at a time. Um, and so, yeah, if you, if you enter 
and go back to your country, carry on your job for a few months while you're getting yourself ready to move to America for the final time. That's perfectly reasonable. That's very normal. People do that all the time. Um, will AF63325 be interviewed? Are you talking about DV 2023? I don't know. You'll find out in the next few days if that's what you're talking about. Um, the final two NLs are being sent right now, um, like over the next few days, right? Um, uh, OC24 in living in Tokyo. How's the embassy in terms of formats? It's fine. They don't have many um, selectees, so it's not like we keep a track record because um, they, they got so few, it doesn't really make sense to keep a track record in that way. So, um, but I think they're fine. Hi, Simone. Now, Simone is a, uh, a way of saying my name, but with a feminine aspect. And just look at me. You think I'm feminine? <laughs> like, my name is Simon. Uh, I'm a DV2024 win winner, and my case number is 15K in Africa region. When should I expect my interview? I don't know. Uh, you know, um, you got a low case number, so... Uh, you know, maybe maybe it'll be soon. Uh, well, when I say soon, October, November time, but we'll see. Uh, good TV twenty two got you win. Oh, nice. Another. Oh, I'm having like there's been what, four or five of you come back and said you've got your green cards on this on this live today. That's fantastic. I love those. Uh, Ilana says thank you for the answer. You're welcome. Um, any no issues with two and being regarded as spam by Gmail? Yes. Yeah. Uh, that does happen. Some people miss their 2NL. <clears throat> how can it be prevented? Whitelisting a certain uh, sender's email address. Um, how often and when should one up, one up the status oneself? I don't know about the one up the status thing. I don't know what you're talking about, the status. As for whitelisting in your email, well, that's something to ask someone uh, who provides the email for you, right? But uh, the real question is, um, if your 2NL email goes to spam and you don't see it, is that a problem? No, it's not really a problem because you can go and check the ESC page, which is where all the information is anyway. The email you get for the 2NL is absolutely useless. It only says on there, go and check your ESC page. The ESC page is the page where you saw your uh, letter that says you're selected. And what happens is when you get the 2NL, you get an email, it says go to this other page, the ESC page, and you'll see that your original selected letter has been replaced by the 2NL, which is the interview schedule. And that's got the details, your, your appointment time and that sort of thing. So if you want to keep your 1NL as a, as a keepsake, as a you know some sort of souvenir, go there and download that now, right, before you get your 2NL. You don't really need it, but you can download it. Um, and then uh, if you are worried about, you know, you might have missed the, the email, just go and check your ESC page uh, when you hear that other people are being scheduled for your embassy. Um, makes sense? Poopyman93, how to fard? Oh, my God. So <laughs> I think you probably mean fart. I, I don't know, but whatever. Um, just joined in, would advise someone with a case number of AF19K stay in Africa, accurate Ghana for the interview of DV2024? Oh, that's a great question. <laughs> uh, okay, so let's just, let, let me answer this a couple of ways. <clears throat> so first thing is, yes, clearly there is a risk for people in Ghana and some of the other embassies. And so, you know, it's very natural and it's sensible that you're thinking about how you should deal with that, right? So I'm glad you're thinking about it. Now, AF19K is a very low case number compared to the AF122,000 that we've seen, right? So you're probably in the first, you know, few hundred Ghanaians um, that are selected. So assuming you put in your DS260 fast and you got processed fairly fast, then you have a good chance of being the first, you know, first few cases to be scheduled at Ghana. But we don't know whether they're going to be restricting um, the number of interviews they give or not. They uh, they started off giving 25 cases a month, then they went to 30, 
which is both those numbers are nonsense. It's far too few cases. They should have been doing 100 to 150 a month. Very recently, they increased their capacity to 50 cases a month in Ghana. Um, so it's improving. But is it going to get fixed by the time you go through? I don't know. And is 50 cases a month, if that's what they keep it at, is that going to be enough to get you through? I don't know, but I suspect it would be okay. So for a low case number like yours, you might be able to just stay at Ghana and, and not worry too much, maybe. But you'll have to make a judgment later yourself, right? Um, <clears throat> now, for if you had a higher case number or you're one of these other embassies, you might be tempted to say, oh, I know what I'll do is I'll move my embassy. And um, that kind of works, but it, it doesn't always work. Because if you email KCC saying, I'm in Ghana, but I know my chances in Ghana are low because my embassy is crap and they're not going to you know, do all these interviews, and I want to move to Algeria. I want to be I want to be scheduled in Algeria because I know they're great, right? Um, KCC will refuse that request because they want you to be interviewed where you live, and they don't give a monkeys that uh, that your embassy is um, is underperforming. They they want to keep people where they live, right? So instead of asking them to move embassies, you should ask them to let you unlock your DS two sixty and change address, and that address should then be somewhere in Algeria, right? But you'd have to physically be there because you can't just pretend you're going to be in Algeria or wherever the hell you want to get moved to because they will ask for proof that you are reside there. You'll have to have a, um, you know, probably a visa to live there. You'll have to show how you're surviving there and so on. And if you lie at any point in, the, in this process, you're facing refusal because you lied, right? So getting moved from embassy A to embassy B is not easy. Um, and it generally, generally speaking, it only is where you've got good connection with the country you're trying to move to. You, you, you come from that country, you've got family and work opportunities in that country, you've moved to that country, right? So those are the reasons that will get accepted. You just being... Uh, nervous about your own embassy and wanting to move to some other embassy is not good enough reason for KCC. Okay, I hope that's I hope that's helpful. Um, okay, scheduled in uh, in September for the London embassy. I hope the weather's good for you. It's normally kind of crappy in London around about September. Is the DS two sixty number the same as the confirmation number? Yes. Um, is you can always get that number back by going into your DS260 and you navigate through each of the pages. And on the last page, you see your confirmation number, which is the DS260 confirmation number. So that's that's it. Yeah, that's what you have to enter uh, when you're registering for the online system, okay? Is there a chance for numbers above 45,000 in Algeria? No, not in DV2023. The visa bulletin, the final visa bulletin has been issued. It won't change. Um, that's it. I think some people think there are two months left or something. There's no more time left. We've had the final visa bulletin and the number won't change. Sorry about that. I submitted my DS-260 on May 15th. My case number is AS7000. I'd like to switch to AOS. To switch from KCC to AOS, can, can I send the notify early uh, or when my CMB current? I'm assuming you're a DV2024 case. Um, it's way too late for DV2023 to switch to AOS, right? So, um, so yeah, you, if you switch to AOS, you basically, you let KCC know that you want to switch to AOS, AOS, you pay them a fee, and then when you become current, you submit your I-485. What I suggest is you go to, um, uh, if you're interested in AOS, you go to forums.immigration.com and you find the DV Lottery Forum and you find the thread on adjustment of status. There's a thread there that is managed by uh, a user by the name of someone's mum, um, and she's a fantastic person. She's very knowledgeable about DV-related adjustment of status. She's the absolute oracle on all, all those things. So you go there, okay? Uh, from Peru, bienvenido from Peru, uh, South America, native languages in Spanish. That's all. Awesome. 
in the DS-260, do I need to enter the physical address in English or Spanish is okay? Spanish is okay. When we're talking about um, company names and um, uh, street addresses and that sort of thing, it wouldn't really make sense to enter your street address in English, right? And and company names, like the company you work for, like, um, you know, you work for a bakery. Well, the, a bakery is a bakery, right? Um, and you use the, the name if it's Simon's Bakery, you know, that will be in Spanish and you put the name in Spanish. That's the business name. Um, so you generally don't translate names or addresses in the DS-260, okay? But um, anyway, John, uh, glad to have some South Americans here because I don't get enough, frankly. And my uh, mi suegra uh, is from Peru. So, you know, glad to have a Peruvian here. I have family in Argentina through my wife's side. My wife is from Spain. So we've got family in Argentina and now Peru. So, um, you know, who knows? Maybe I'll be a South American one day. Uh, someone get green card, can get married and take him. Yeah, if you win a green card um, you and you've moved to America, you can, spot, you can get married and you can uh, bring your husband, but it, it will take time. It takes years. <coughs> so uh, in some cases, people will actually become a citizen before they can bring their um, their husband on a sponsorship basis. So um, then they can bring in their husband much faster. If you're a citizen, you can bring in a husband or a wife uh, much faster. Um, but yes, you can do that. It's possible to, to do that depending on, on the circumstances of your case. Okay. Um, Uh, please, sir, do you need to include children over 21 in the DS-260? If you did not, would it be a problem during the interview? It wouldn't be a problem during the interview, but it would be a mistake. And so you should correct it in the interview or beforehand. Because um, uh, if you ever want to sponsor that over 21-year-old child for a green card later on through family-based sponsorship, they will pull out your old DS-260 and here it is, you say you've got this child who's now 27 years old or whatever, um, but you never listed that child in your DS-260. That's a problem. You've created a record which is inaccurate. And your DS-260 should be accurate. So you definitely want to correct that either before the interview, ideally, um, or at the interview if you have to. Okay? Um Deng says, is there any travel guide you should know? Not really. Um, I, I'm working on one, but it's it's a long way away. <clears throat> but um, yeah, so, you know, no, I don't really have a travel guide as such. Um, but feel free to ask specific questions on my uh, blog, britsimonsays.com, and I'll try and answer. Okay. Um, John, your case is 3250 in Peru. Always put, uh, you've said it, South America, but list your case as year, you know, 2024, SA 3250. Um, your case number is probably not too bad in DB 2024. We just have to wait and see what the numbers are like. Um, but you can see what the number is for DB 2023. And as a general rule, uh, I think 2024 numbers are going to be much higher um, than 2023. Um, and therefore the visa bulletin will probably move faster. I could explain that. I'm not gonna explain it right now, but it, it should happen that way, okay? Uh, DB 2022 OC, I saw you alive. I wanted to say thank you. Oh, that's nice. I still come and watch and listen as I enjoy listening. <laughs> Been to the US twice since DB and uh, moving over later this year. Well, good luck on the move. Why anybody would want to listen to me <laughs> drone on about DV lottery when you've already got your green card. I don't know, but, uh, but I appreciate you coming. Um, so thank you. <laughs> That's funny. Um, like, yeah, I just don't think I'm that interesting really, but <clears throat> how much money should I have in my bank account to meet fin financial criteria? So Alfredo, generally speaking for many years now, I've been saying $10,000 per person. Now, it's not a hard and fast number. 
But if you imagine going to the interview, I used to say, by the way, that for a family of four, you would have 10,000 for each of the adults and then maybe five or 6,000 extra for the kids, right? But as time has gone on, the value of $10,000 has reduced. And so if I were going through an interview process today, I would probably want to show either savings of $10,000 per individual, including kids, um, and preferably that as a minimum, or I would obtain an I-134 through a friend or a family member or whatever um, to sort of back that up. If you've got less than that, uh, it might be a bit risky. I can tell you I went through $40,000 um, when I emigrated to the USA. I spent $40,000 in the first few weeks like that. So, you know, having, you know, obviously I should, I should sort of, explain that um i'm trying to think how to put this but that wasn't a lot of money to me in a sense right it is a lot of money it's a lot of money for anyone but i came to a very expensive place place in san francisco area in the bay area where i knew it was going to be expensive um and you know i included that forty thousand dollars that i just sort of blew in like five or six weeks i include things like you know i, I bought a little car and you know, I did a few other things, but it wasn't the only $40,000 I had or came with, right? So, it, you know, my experience is probably going to be a little bit different to the typical immigrant. Um, I came here when I was 50 years old, so I was already sort of fairly well set up in life and had, uh, you know, had a reasonable amount of money. So, um, so it's not going to be like that for everybody. I get it. I'm, I, I don't, um, I'm trying not to be insensitive about uh, everybody's personal situation, right? But uh, but from the part, point of view of passing the the interview, ten thousand dollars per person, or an I one thirty four, or a job, uh, a job offer, or an incredibly good career. So another thing that if I'd have gone through a consular processing uh, interview, I went through adjustment of status. But if I went through a CP interview because of my work, I would have been less concerned about the money because my work was fairly specialized technology work i was very in, employable and even a layman such as a consular officer could probably tell that from my career path my resume cv uh you know the the way i had worked the fact that i'd been uh contracted by american companies previously all of that would have been um a clear sign to the consular officer uh that i would have you know, not been a problem. But I also have my brother who is living in the USA who is prepared to you know, provide an I-134 if I needed it. You know, that would have been fine. As it was, because I had already moved to the States on an H-1 visa, uh, I already had an income. It, for me, it wasn't really a problem. Um, you know, so, yeah, not a problem. Okay, case number depend on the first form filed if you... Filed late, you get a high case number. No, you don't. Well, that's a, an interesting um, point of view, but no, that's not the case. And in fact, I can prove that's not the case. Um, if you download any of the files that we have on SEAC data, so for example, take the DV2023 SEAC data from uh, Zarthus' site, there's a column in there that says, I think it's submit date. And uh, let me, I've just got one of these open, so let me just check that. Um, yeah, submit date. That that column is the date the person uh, entered the lottery, right? And you could then very easily see that the dates are randomly spread out amongst all the case number ranges. It is not true to say that if you entered the lottery late in the process, like early November rather than uh, middle of October, that you will get a higher case number. It's not like that. The 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 process of assigning case numbers is part of the randomization um, process that actually gives, that selects the winners. Basically what they do is if there's 10 million entries, they give everybody a number randomly between one and 10 million. And then they take the first 50,000 or whatever it might be for the single region. Um, they'll take the first 50,000 and everybody else is a loser. Um, and only the first 50,000 uh, winners right? That's basically how it works, right? So everybody gets a randomized number in as part of that original uh, draw process, and it doesn't make any difference 
your education, number of people on your case, uh, the day you entered the interview, uh, you know, none of that makes any difference, right? It's, it's, uh, it is a random draw. Anna, Bula. I say Bula, right, when I say Bula. Uh, I plan to take my children later once we're settled in the US. Do I still need to include them in the interview? Yes, include them in the interview. Because unless you want to not see your kids for five years, um, you will want to take them fairly quickly after you move to the US, right? So what you should do is include them on your lottery process, um, include them in the interview, get them a, a, a green card. You can all go to the US to activate your green cards, right? Then send the kids home and they hang out with grandma or whatever is your plan. Um, and you know maybe then six months later, you've, once you've established yourself in the US, you just call them over, but they've got a green card at that point. Your other option would be to not include them in the interview. Then you go to the US and you file an, um, an I-130 case to bring them on family-based sponsorship. And that's going to take you five years. So, um, and during that time, they won't be able to come to the States. So that's a real mess. So don't do that, right? Include them in the, in the DB process, all right? Um, do I have any transfer interview for DV 2024 for AS 33700 from Bhutan? Maybe you do, maybe you don't, I don't know. Um, we don't know the highest case numbers. We don't know, know the number of selectees. So at the moment, I can't tell you how high that case number is. It probably is in the upper ranges, but it probably is going to be lower in comparison than the 21,000 we reached in DV 2023, all right? And I'll explain that a little bit better later, but um, I'll, I'll leave it for later. You'll have to come back in about four weeks, five weeks. And I'll, you'll see I'll publish some videos which will be about case number analysis and it will explain this a little bit in more detail. And I'll try and relate case numbers from one year to another a little bit, okay? uh what will be a probable reason for eu 2024 having so many more holes than previous years okay all the regions have got more more holes i suspect than in previous years because all of the regions are quoting some pretty high case numbers it's the same in africa the same in eu same in uh, asia same in south america and oceania it's the same everywhere Every, um, some bananas high case numbers like Oceana 4,800, I've heard. Uh, I heard one Oceana case at 6,700, I think. Um, but I'm not 100% sure that one's genuine. That could be a misunderstanding. Um, but I've heard several at 4,600, 4,700, 4,800. So I'm convinced Oceana is going to be a case number of around about 5,000, right? That's stupidly high. Um, uh, and it can only mean, in, in my mind, one of two things or a combination of the two things. The the two things are an incredibly high number of holes based on some new security thing, which I'll cover in a minute, or a lot more selectees, which I find hard to believe. Um, it could be a combination of, those, of both. We could have more selectees and more holes, right? But we'll have to wait and see. <coughs> now, what what's the reason for holes? Why is there an increase? Well, the government have been uh, developing more and more techniques to automatically filter through uh, the entries to disqualify cases that they find uh, suspicious, right? And um, over the last few years, they've been improving their facial recognition technology a lot, um, and they've got more data. Uh, the, they went online with the entry system in, uh, I think, 2013 or so, maybe earlier. Um, the DS-260s went, uh, um, or the, the process moving towards DS-260s, as opposed to the old paper-based um, process uh, was in 2014, I think. Um, over the years, they, they gathered more and more data, right? And over the years, technology has been better to improve things like automatic facial recognition, uh, improve uh, machine learning and AI that lets them sort of understand data connections between different cases, um, all sorts of things, right? <coughs> so basically the technology 
would let them to would let them automatically reject a bunch of cases, more cases this year than in previous cases. And it's those rejections that create the holes. So I think they've implemented some new security procedure. Now, I don't know what new security procedure, although I'm pretty confident it's probably based around about one of two things, maybe both, uh, increased facial recognition and increased um, uh, machine learning smarts about uh, about IP addresses and, um, and, and detecting fraudulent entries, okay? So, um, so I think it's probably the combination, and that's what's giving us high, higher holes rates and lower density. And you know, we'll have to wait and see if my theory is is correct. Although, of course, it is. <laughs> uh, okay, in DRC interview delay, and we're closing to the deadline, which is September twenty three, uh, thirtieth, twenty three. What will happen to those cases that were not called for interview? Unfortunately, nothing happens to them. They just kind of like die on the vine. Uh, they're ignored forever. Ne there's no advantage that can ever be given um, to those cases once the year has passed. So if you don't get called for an interview or if you don't become current or whatever, then your chance is just lost. You can re-enter and, and, and reapply for other years, but you don't get any advantage from the previous win. So it's kind of brutal, but that's what it is. Leo, sir, can I contact KCC three times? What? Can I contact KCC three times? And they were saying that my case is current for interview processing. Uh, AF12K submitted July 24, still didn't get to an L. Uh, is it possible in coming weeks? Okay, Leo, you can contact KCC as many times as you like. They told you three times that, um, that you were current for interview processing, which means you were in AV status. Um, but you were probably AV status at, a, at an embassy that has built up a backlog of cases similar to yours where those people are ready for processing, um, but the embassy is not taking enough cases month to month to clear out that backlog. And so unfortunately, um, it causes delays. And in some cases, it will mean the end of your chance. Um, we are just now seeing the final two NLs being sent over the next few days. We'll see uh, the last two NLs being sent. And so if you don't get your two NL, your interview notification in the next few days, then it's probably over for you. Um, so I'm sorry to be the bringer of bad news if you hadn't already realized that. Um, Winner of 2023, but not current. When I check my email on Thursday, they, they chance. if you're not current now, you never will be. Um, the case the the visa bulletin has published the final numbers they're not going to be increased um at all we already know what the final numbers will be um for september they're not going to increase um af 359xx from algeria ds260 open two times uh visa issue 127 want to thank you very much for the valuable information you were given to us that is exhausting process i'm glad you were um you're issued. I have to say, Algeria did a fantastic job, um, and um, and I'm glad to see that you you opened your DS260 a couple of times without fear, um, as is right. The 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 bullshit that is said about not opening your DS260 is nonsense. It's provably nonsense, um, and so I'm glad it worked out for you, and that obviously you proved that uh, that you were able to unlock. Um, anyway, congratulations um, on your visa being issued, and good luck in the States. Good luck on your trip. On your trip. Uh, yummy Plus from San, <laughs> San Antonio, Texas. Uh, yummy Plus. Um, that's awesome. Interesting name. Uh, but anyway, San Antonio, Texas. Yeah, interesting place. You must be cooking right now. It must be pretty hot there, I think, right? You're in a heat wave. My wife is in... Italy at the moment. She was due to go to Rome in a few days' time. She's doing a, a, a trip of France and, and Italy, and she was due to go to Rome, and because the temperatures there are just so stupid, we've changed her plans. We're flying her to Portugal and to Lisbon instead. Um, so she's going to go to Amalfi, which is going to be horrendous in terms of people, but uh, she wants to see Amalfi, and then she's flying straight to um, Lisbon from 
from Rome, but not staying in Rome for any any length of time. Just too hot there at the moment, and uh, you know, crazy. Um, can my brother take me to the U.S.? He sent to the U.S. by the lottery process. No, not until he's so. Basically, the the process for siblings um, is a very very long process. So what your brother has to do is he has to become a citizen first of all, which takes about five years. Then he can start sponsoring you. He can file an application for you. But but the last I looked, it was something like an eleven year waiting list. I think it's longer now. Um, so if he's just gone to the states, then it's probably fifteen to twenty years before he could actually get you a green card, actually get you into the States. That ch that timeline could change over the next few years. I don't know. Um, but the first thing he has to do is become uh, a citizen himself. OK. Carol, um, 2023 AF58K, got a newborn a month ago. How do we go about adding her to the DS60? You only need to do that, Carol, if you've got um, an interview. <clears throat> so you don't tell me whether you've got an interview scheduled or not. But once you get scheduled for interview, if you haven't already, you may have a few days left. But once you get a 2NL, you would contact the embassy and try and add the uh, the baby that way. Um, that's not the way I normally recommend it. Uh, you normally do that as soon as the baby is, is born. But right now, since we're almost at the last moment here, um, then you would just wait until you've got that 2NL and then negotiate with the embassy um, once they've got your case from KCC. Okay. Uh, I added on my DS-260 form for the birth city. On EDV, it's Boko, but on the DS-260, it's Fedis Boko, same city. So should I reopen the DS-260 to fix it? Um, no. No, it's fine. So... Fedis is a smaller part of a city called Boko, I presume, right? Boko, yeah, Boko. I don't know these cities, so I, um, excuse me if I'm getting that wrong. But you were born then in Boko, so uh, so you haven't made any mistake. It's just you've been more precise in your DS-260. That's fine. No problem with that. Um, you're a winner of DV2020. How is my chances now? You have to wait for the appeal. Um, you and quite a few thousand other people will be competing for uh, 9,095 reserve visas um, if we win the appeal, but we have to win the appeal first. Okay. 2023, will my case be possible for interview? No, your, your case number never became uh, current. The AS cap was set at 21,000. Your case never became current, so you have absolutely no possibility. There is no chance that you will ever get uh, an interview or a green card from the um, 2023 lottery. You'll have to try again in future years. Good luck on that. Um, uh, so yeah, good luck. Uh, service is huge for us, which we remain grateful for that. Oh, you're welcome, Kevin. Um, you're welcome indeed. I'm, 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 just, I'm just sorry you, well, you did what you did. <laughs> Um, John, in present work section, I entered computer science and asked for present employer plus address. Then it has, it has asked, does the job require at least two years training experience? Yes or no? Well, your job does, right? Um, you, people worry about this particular question. You just need to answer it. <clears throat> it, it doesn't, it's not a knockout question either way, right? Um, but generally speaking, a computer science job um, needs two years of training or experience, right? So you you would say yes, I would say. Um, is it possible for 2023 AF42K to be interviewed at Ghana? I'd say almost certainly no. They are f so far behind backlog. Um, no, even if there's more 2NLs, there must be thousands, well, not thousands, but certainly hundreds of people in front of you with lower case numbers, probably you know probably with a higher priority um and there's no way in the world that there are enough interviews there's not even enough visas to to get to your range let alone if if ghana themselves were suddenly behaving correctly um so no i think your chances are gone i'm sorry about that my friend mohammed but that's the way it is so you have to try in future years okay 
Okay, uh, Mohandas Kareb from St. Cloud, Minnesota. Again, Minnesota. Why? What's in South? What's in St. Cloud? <laughs> I mean, you are, and that's great, um, you know, but why did you choose that? I'd love to hear, like, this is, I've got to start that web, that blog page to let people let me know uh, how they're getting on. And one of the things I'd like to know is when you choose to live in St. Cloud, Minnesota, what the hell were you thinking? What, why, why did you go there? Um, and is you, yeah, I don't know. There must be great opportunities. Maybe there's great work there or something. I don't know. I'd love to hear about it. Um, uh, and I'm 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 horribly close-minded to many of the areas of the of the of this country. There's many areas, by the way, in this country I would not set a foot near because of the politics. I have a 15-year-old daughter, um, and I would hate for her to be treated the way that some of these uh, state governments are treating people. Um, I would hate to be surrounded by half-educated morons that that have no idea what they're talking about in political discussion or whatever else. Um, I'd hate to be surrounded by people who are regularly armed, uh, you know, with weapons, etc. where just to go down to the supermarket and that happens in some places. So there's many areas of the country I would not live in, right? Um, and that's partly to do with my politics, but it's also partly to do with a reasonable amount of, um, I don't know, intelligence i guess on just wanting to live somewhere where i'm not surrounded by morons i'm not saying minnesota is like that it's just that i would wonder what the opportunities are uh in saint cloud maybe it's a wonderful place i don't, I don't know I'm not sure anyway fausto how are you um still waiting for the autograph in the book <laughs> that book you're the one that keeps reminding me i'm, I'm lazy as hell I'm sorry. If I can help with, with my little experience from Hot Houston, I'd be happy, happy to help in some way. That'd be awesome, first I, I would enjoy that, I'm sure. I like Houston, actually, funnily enough. I hate Texas, uh, but I like Austin. I like Houston, funnily enough. I thought it was a cool place. Um, I'm sure there's some great places in there. It's just surrounded by Texans. That's the problem. It's like one of my favorite cities is Paris, um, but there's a lot of Parisians there. That also is a problem. Um, so, you know, it's one of those things I feel that way about Texas. Um, I was wondering what uh, highest AS number for 2024. I think I've heard 44,000, I think. Um, could be higher than that, though. So I'm pretty sure it's going to be it's going to be a little higher than that, I would think. So we'll see. Um, what will be interesting, though, in, in, in Asia is going to be the cutoff for Nepal and Iran. You know, Asia, Asia is a weird region because there are two countries, Iran and Nepal, that dominate the entries, right? So they have many more of the entries than any other countries in Asia. Therefore, they get many more of the selectees, and they get so many, in fact, that they are con concentrated in the first uh, lower number ranges. So this year, for example, uh, Iran cut off in DV2023, there are no Iranian cases higher than about 14,000 or 15,000 or something. And there's no Nepalese cases above 21,000. Um, <clears> and, you know, whereas the region as a whole went much higher than that. So um, people think that's unfair, but it's because it actually is an indication that Iran and Nepal, if you're Iranian or Nepalese, you actually have a lower chance of selection uh, than other people in Asia. People don't understand that, they don't understand the math or whatever, I get it. It doesn't feel that way, but that is actually the truth because they actually disqualify more cases from from um, from countries like Nepal, etc. So anyway, back to your uh, question. We'll see uh, later on, we'll have more information uh, later on this year, and then we'll have the pre precise information on January 1, okay? Uh, Alita from Cuba, Bienvenida from Cuba. Um, two and L will be sent in October or January. I was looking at fiscal year, uh, sending on January. Okay, DV 2024 starts on the 1st of October, which means the first um, interview notices will be sent out in August for um, 
uh, for the interviews in October. Now, the people that get interviewed in October will be people who are both current and processed at that time, which will be a low number of cases. So depending on your case number and when you submitted your DS-260 and how fast your DS-260 was processed, that determines whether or not you get an October interview or November, December, and so on. But there will be some people interviewed in, in October. We'll have, to, you know, we'll have to see how many. Okay. Fausto, you can share a case from the group DB2023. He is thinking to come back to his country because he doesn't get a good job. He didn't learn English since he since he knew he was a winner. Please study English. What a great point, Fausto. It's very important to, to brush up your skills. It's very hard. I think people underestimate how hard it is to move to a new country. It takes balls. It takes guts to, uh, to, to do it. And it takes determination and it takes special, um, special skills and, and determination to make it, right? I mean, it's, it's a big enough to say, I, I uh, emigrated here when I was 50, 49, 50. Um, I had a good job. I had a good house. I had friends. I had, you know, nice cars. I, you know, uh, lived in the UK. I could travel anywhere. I, I worked in the States many times. Um, so, you know, for me to actually sort of throw a hand grenade into my life and, and emigrate at that age was a fairly big deal, right? Um, but that says something about the person I was and my wife was that we were prepared to take that risk and that gamble. My daughter was only six at the time. And so, uh, you know, we made the decision for her, obviously. But my wife and, and I were committed to, you know, we wanted certain things. And it takes guts. Um, and it's hard. And if one of the things that you can't even be bothered to do is to learn the, the, the language, learn your skills, I'm sorry, you probably are not the sort of person who's going to make it. If you think that, I mean, English is not um, the official language of America. There is no official language of America. There's plenty of people that only speak Spanish here. Um, but it limits you. And you can't afford to be limited when you come to America and when you're you know, a new immigrant. You should not be limiting yourself with, with things. So you're absolutely right. Um, you know, you've got to, uh, you know, you're right, Fausto. You've got to take every advantage you can. So I think it's a very good point you're making to people there. Okay, I've been talking for an hour and a half. I think I, I have to call it a day. This is kind of crazy. Um, Let's see, if I just take one more question, if I see something that's uh, that's an interesting question. I see lots of very nice um, thank yous and, and got into the US and all these great messages and I, I'm not ignoring them, I'm just sort of skipping by them, but, um, uh, but I appreciate all those messages, that's awesome. Uh, waiting to be called, this is, uh, this won't be my last question, um, but this is Iran, waiting for Ankara. Ankara, I think, <coughs> I think they've, there's been some uh, interviews sent out for Iranians. Um, but I, I don't know what the percentage is. I'd have no way of estimating that. Um, you know, you have to just fingers crossed, that's all you can do. Okay, let me find, let me find one more question here. Uh, Okay, uh, John, you've you've asked a couple of questions, but let me just use yours as the final one because it's an interesting one. In occupation, if I work and also study, can I put first my work and and the student as the other op occupation? If I'm taking Google certificates in Coursera platform, can I add this to the school name? Basically, no. This is a good question. People often say, for example, the question would be, I do this job and this other job as part time. Should I be adding the part time job? And the answer to that is almost always no. Don't add the part-time job, right? Um, in your case, you're asking a variation of that, which is about studies, right? Do you register your current occupation as being, are you employed or you're at school? You only get, you can only say what your occupation is one time, right? So it should be your main job, your main focus. Are you mainly a student who's got a job or are you a person with a job who is also a student, okay? So if you are a person with a job who is also a student, then your occupation is you've got a job. You're in IT. Um, that's your job, right? Um, 
the second part of your question is about Coursera courses and that sort of thing. Coursera courses are not formal education. Uh, online courses, etc. unless you're registered with a university where you're doing an online course, accredited, uh, you know, um, course, normally for a longer period of time, then that would be worth listing. But it's not worth listing shortish courses that are online courses that are informal uh, methods of study, things like Coursera. Okay, so don't, don't miss those. Um, I don't think you'll need to. You don't need to spill your guts on every single thing that's going on in your life in the DS260. You'd be better off to just put the main salient points in there. Accurate information, yes. Uh, complete information, yes. But don't go to the sort of the level of detail that you're sort of drilling down to. Get on and sort of submit your DS260 sooner rather than later. Okay, John. All right, everybody. That will be my last question. Please do subscribe to the channel. I'm sorry that this went on for so long, an hour and a half. I had no idea. I've just been enjoying the time with you. And um, for those of you that have come and said uh, that you're already in the States, I really appreciate those comments and uh, and good luck to all of you and best of luck to, to everybody for the remaining DV 2023 cases. And we're getting very close to where DV 2024 is going to become a real thing. So uh, that's exciting. Always look forward to the new year um, and, you know, fingers crossed for, for that one too. But let's first of all get DV 2023 out of the way. And please, God, let's get a an appeal decision on DB 2022 and 2021 soon. That would be nice. All right, everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye.